he, he was an amazing figure. I mean, he was a polymath as well in that he was also a very uh, gifted musician. He wrote a large number, I think 20 odd symphonies. And uh, so he, you know, he had many strings to his bow, but along the way he acquired an interest in astronomy. I think he, he uh, met up with the Astronomer Royal at the time and got chatting with him and, got, and that sort of really fired up his interest in astronomy. And that also got him interested in building telescopes because of course if you actually wanted to do astronomy then you couldn't just nip round to the local telescope shop and buy one, you actually had to make a telescope. And so I think over his career he built, also built several hundred telescopes, some very large in size, some a little more manageable in size. Um, and so a lot of his, his developments actually came from the, the sort of the technical side as well in that he was actually making the sort of cutting edge instruments of the time which actually enabled him to make these, these really leading observations. I, got the, I get the impression sometimes that the people that led the way in astronomy in those days were able to do so because they were wealthy. Was he a rich man, do we know? Or? Not hugely, I don't think, in that he was spent quite a lot of his time supplementing his income by being you know, the organist at churches and so on. So he wasn't independently wealthy. He was actually you know, working for a living as well. And it, tell us about his more... Uh, traditional fatherly role then, because he, he, he parented... Yeah, so he, uh, he actually only had one child, uh, John Herschel, um, who uh, uh, sort of carried on in the family business, if you like, in that uh, quite actually relatively sort of late on in his life when I think Herschel was in his late 70s and John, his son, went to visit him for a summer um, and sort of became interested in the astronomy program really then and really sort of picked up the baton and continued his father's work. And in particular, the main thing he did is, of course, all William Herschel's observations were made from the Northern Hemisphere. And there's some things you just can't see from the Northern Hemisphere. And so the main contribution to this area that John Herschel made was he actually travelled down to South Africa and uh, uh, used the newly established observatory down there to actually make observations of the southern sky and found another couple of thousand uh, nebulae there. And so then these two sets of nebulae were combined to really sort of map the whole sky and uh, create this thing called the General Catalogue, which is sort of still the foundation. It, it was modified a little bit, so it became a thing known as the New General Catalogue. And if you look in, in papers about astronomy now, you'll think, find that galaxies are still referred to as NGC something or other from this new general catalogue, which really is the, 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 the offspring of the work of William and John Herschel. Was John a heavy hitter in the league of William or was he kind of in his father's shadow? He was a heavy hitter in his own right. He was a, a figure who, you know, he was a big player in the sort of the, the, the administration of science. He was associated with the Royal Society. In fact, he sort of escaped to South Africa to get away from that and do some science. While he was in South Africa, uh, he met up with Charles Darwin uh, while he was off on his, his travels. Um, and actually, uh, John Herschel had some, for the time, rather advanced views on evolution. Of course, it probably wasn't called evolution at the time, but he had already written various things commenting on the fact that you know, he wasn't averse to the idea that new species might emerge and there was nothing particularly you know, unlikely about new species, species emerging. Um, and in fact, uh, Darwin sort of tips a hat to, to uh, John Herschel in the introduction to his book on, uh, the, on evolution by saying that you know, it would, what he was would be describing had come out of some discussion with you know, the great philosophers of the time and was clearly actually referring to John Herschel in terms of the, what had motivated some of his work. So he really you know, did lots of stuff all across the board and uh, clearly was a very busy man because he also had 12 children. Um, who actually, uh, somewhat unusually for the time, all 12 of them, you know, usually you, know, you had big families at that time and that's because lots of children died in infancy. But actually all 12 of his children uh, grew up uh, and lived long and help, uh, relatively healthy lives. Um, and in turn, one of them became an astronomer. So he was the father of yet another astronomer, uh, Alexander Herschel, uh, who went on to study mostly the, the properties of uh, meteors, shooting stars. And he was the first person who really systematically tried to study their spectra, to split the light that's, as these things burn up, they give out a lot of light. By splitting that light up into a spectrum, you can try and figure out what the, the objects are made of. And so he was the first person who he designed his own instrument for doing this um, and was able to actually detect the fact that there was sodium emission from them and something else which he thought was probably due to magnesium. I think there's still some argument about whether he'd really identified magnesium or whether it was oxygen, but anyway, he was the first person who sort of studied these things in a systematic way again and was able to ascertain you know, what they were actually made of. And also he studied where they came from and made sort of fairly large advances in, we, we know that these shooting stars are actually the junk that's left behind when a comet goes past. And so they sort of map out the orbits of comets, they're the stuff that's left in the trail of a comet. And so by studying in detail where, where these uh, meteor showers were in space, he was able to figure out which ones are associated with which comet as well. So again, sort of third generation 
Um, his father was an astronomer and his father before him was an astronomer, three generations of really very powerful astronomers.